Welcome to the O Show. I am Laura Babcock, and I can't believe it. But since we last had the O Show Greenbelt Scandal panel on, the RCMP is involved. That has happened since we last spoke to Keith and Mark. And not only that, but there was a column in the National Post saying that Doug Ford is toast, that his political brand is not working, and that the party would do well to get rid of him. The call is coming from inside the house now for Doug Ford. So beyond that, there's been all kinds of other breaking news, but as I always like to start these panels, let's go to the reporter from Queen's Park days, none other than Keith Leslie. Keith, what's been going on? Because I can think of at least three breaking events in addition to the RCMP <laughs> investigation. Well, of course, the RCMP actually knocking on the door of the Premier's office is pretty darn significant stuff. And of course, has knocked the government for a loop. Um, but, you know, they did this, in, uh, as you say, two weeks ago when the legislature was not sitting. Legislature returned sitting this week. The NDP are all you know, geared up, ready for bear. They've got some serious, serious questions to ask, even though they know the government's going to deflect for the most part. We don't want to interfere with an investigation, but they're ready. You know, they've got some seriously good questions ready to go. We have the request for the, the Premier's cell phones that came out from the NDP. We also had today a post by Merritt uh, from a Globe and Mail or a, a Global article talking about how some communities are going after the Ford government for recompense for the money they spent in this whole mess because absolutely. of all, right? I mean, so so he said it wasn't going to cost anything to municipalities. It's absolutely costing municipalities. And we have uh, an environmental alliance going after Ford, suing him for the, the you know, the paperwork on the green belt. I mean, those are just a couple of things. So, you know, I think that Merritt Stiles is continuing to, to put the focus on this and to hold the government to account. She is. And she wisely broadened her attack uh, during question period, knowing that the government's going to deflect everything again, especially saying uh, we can't interfere with the police investigation. So in going after the premier's cell phone records and speaking about what she said, th- are there shady backroom deals being performed here? Is it just the green belt that you made deals on? What about ministerial zoning orders? What about Ontario Place? What about Highway 413? Calling it all into question and saying you're basically doing everything in secret. Why are you hiding your cell phone records if there's nothing to hide? The premier's response, when he actually did respond to something, certainly not on the green belt, when he did respond on this, saying he kept talking about, and excuse the name, I, I may get the name wrong, but about little Miss Jones who wanted a pothole fixed. And that's what he's talking about on the phone. Well, maybe, you know, a dozen years ago when he was on Toronto City Council, that was his modus operandi. I, I doubt his premier, he's fixing potholes. But even as all subsequent questions to him are punted to House Leader Paul Calandra, he's repeating little Miss Jones and her pothole. It's just, it's so ludicrous. You know, in my mind, this is the Ford government corruption scandal because Ontario Place, which we'll get to in a moment, gentlemen, has been like just blowing up as well. And so I think you're right for Merritt as the leader of the official opposition, but also for Fraser and for for Mike Schreiner and the Green Party to look at the scope of this. I mean, how can we trust if they were able to do what they did on the green belt, if they were able to so brutally circumvent process and enrich the wealthy at the expense of Ontarians, how are we to trust the Ford government on any other file, on any other deal? 413, Ontario Place, the MZOs, you know, the land taken from Hamilton and other places. How do we trust them with other files like LTC? and autism and all these other things like who's making the decisions who's running this government who do they care about because it sure as hell doesn't seem like they care about the vulnerable people in this province over and over they seem to benefit the wealthy and the elites like you said last week mark or last time we spoke you talked about the fact that it's like we're living in a feudal society and these feudal lords are getting all the money from the king it doesn't feel anything like a democracy so i mean what has been your thought in terms of uh, keith's point of merit expanding the scope to this broader corruption scandal i think this will be a defining moment in ontario politics i really do we really need to get this gross dirty money out of our politics and if the Ford government really wants to fix this, like I, I feel like Calandra is really trying to handle this as best he can, right? 
and and you know for whatever for what it's worth mark I'm, how can i be calling no, you I disagree, though. no no <laughs> no i mean i know you want it to return to a kinder gentler place but it ain't gonna happen under the ford conservative government their actual key to success I, and those funding coffers for the elections when nobody's out there voting is by giving their donors what they want when they're in power so they get the donors money to run i mean it's a war chest strategy go ahead keith <laughs> I was just going to say you touched on it, but we didn't really talk very much about it, which is the the lawsuit launched by uh, Environmental uh, Defense. Yeah. Is it a lawsuit or they're Eco trying to force it? Yeah, Eco Justice yeah. and Environmental Defense. Uh, Eco Justice will do the legal representation. They're basically trying to force the Ford government to obey an order from the Information and Privacy Commission to answer an FOI request about the involvement of the premier and the minister in, I think the quote was in... Uh, destabilizing the green belt uh this is what they're going up so basically this could be really significant if we actually get to a stage of discovery yeah. where government has to put out documents because this is what it's all about and this is what uh the environmental groups are saying and this is uh, mike Schreiner from the green party said applaud this is exactly what we need to do and they said we just want to get at the truth because yeah. it doesn't sound to them and to a great many people like we have heard the truth Right. With, you know, Mr. Ryan Amato leaving, you know, this, the, the former rookie chief of staff to the housing minister, basically taking the whole blame for all of the lands that were picked to come out of the green belt and all this. People know there's more. The smell is still there. Totally. Uh, and, and, and the stench just needs to be, uh, you know, wafted. It needs to be dug in. People need to really dig in further and find out. And the government is not going to respond. Uh, it could even, maybe I, I was disheartened to read this week that the, the, uh, when the federal, when the RCMP were investigating the Trudeau government, they, the investigation had to stall because the Trudeau government refused to turn over documents. Yeah, no, it's gross. And we saw that in Hamilton with the Red Hill investigation. It went way over budget and way over time because they figured out a way not to, to be transparent. So here's a couple of points on that. I put a pin in the statement from the Ford government that they would, they had no appetite or no tolerance for wrongdoing and they were going to cooperate with every investigation. They said that. I knew at the time it was nothing they would live up to, but the point is they've said that. When they said they wouldn't touch the Greenbelt folks and then they broke that promise, the people of Ontario said, hell no, you don't get to lie to us like that. So I think they put themselves in a corner here, which is they're saying they're going to, they're probably not going to, and people to your point, Keith, need to get to the bottom of the bog of this Greenbelt scandal. It reminds me of like when there's like sewage and then you try to throw like leaves on top and hope it gets rid of the <laughs> smell. It ain't gonna work, right? The people of Ontario know no, there's corruption. And now we're wondering, well, how else are we affected by it? Can you imagine the money that has been wasted or given away by this government to these third party people that could have gone, that could have gone to healthcare so we don't have people in the hallways in Ontario, could have gone to keeping nurses in the public sector so we're not losing them all, could have gone to people who are in homelessness, to addiction treatment, could have gone to families who have children who are autistic and the sooner they get treatment, the better for their child's entire lives. And we have this government giving money to fucking developers who are already wealthy. It makes me wanna throw up and to land speculators. So it's not just that we wanna find out what they're up to. We wanna find out where our tax dollars are going to people who don't deserve it, as opposed to all the people that all of us see in desperate need. It is- In broadening this out, like, <laughs> In looking at Ontario Place, normally a government, you know, 95-year lease, this sort of thing, we find out who is financing the company. Right. Infrastructure Ontario is not telling us this. So who's behind this company that apparently I read this week, Thermae, filed for bankruptcy like three years ago. Now they're getting a 95-year lease on prime Toronto waterfront. Which and a half billion that. dollar parking garage. Oh, the parking garage, which is going to go underwater. How much is that going to go overrun, uh, cost who, overrun? Who, what spa? I've, I mean, I've seen that they're sending influencers over to other Thermae spas and we're into this thing. And the, the person who negotiated the deal was at Ford's table at his daughter's wedding. I mean, this, this shit stinks to high heaven with Ontario Place. But let's just talk about that parking garage. 635 million, 100 million, whatever it is, of our tax dollars to a private company to build a big parking lot on the waterfront. The only thing that needs that kind of parking is a casino. I mean, am I the only one who thinks this is just their their workaround to get that casino at Ontario Place that they've wanted? 
hundred percent. Absolutely. This is the this was the golden dream of all times to get a casino on Toronto's waterfront. Oh my god. It is so I I can't help but feel like how many more of these things are gonna come crashing down around them. The legitimacy level now is just strictly with hardcore partisans. Like eighteen percent of the population voted um, gave the majority government, but yeah. Anyway, I, I feel like they are a broken government with no confidence and everybody's figuring out what's going on here and just counting the days till the next election. And I don't I don't know, like how much else is going to go out the door that we can't stop, you know, how many of these fancy little deals that are being done that are locking Ontarians in for decades and decades of costs and 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 you know other issues that are going to come arise with them like i i they're a broken government and i i at this point i don't see how they recover so the next what do we got two and a half years um are going to be what just the big giveaway while they go down with the ship so i don't know i don't i don't think they're going down i I, the, the the thing that disheartened me most in the recent week was that Doug Ford's popularity in the polls, the PCs, oh. they shot back up to 40%. The apology and reversal worked. Those of us that are concerned about, you know, the the, the expansion, the forced expansion of the municipal boundaries and the MZOs and, and, and all the other things that we've been talking about, it's almost, I think, reverted back to background noise for a lot of people. That oh, the, the apology about, yeah. drove through and the reversal, you know, we're putting the lands back. And of course, that's the narration they keep repeating every time they actually address the issue is, we made a mistake. We've admitted it. We're moving on. And now it's the pointing at the NDP. Why do you keep on looking back? You're a backwards looking party. Well, so, oh, sure. Fair. Let's if not I'm, look back at what I did. No, I mean, it's insane. For them too, I would too, right? It's And that whole indemnification thing, when they came out with that, I was like, do the terrible thing, the Greenbelt <laughs> lands. Uh, try to convince people that it's better to do the terrible thing than not do the terrible thing, aka their housing, housing, housing thing. Fail terribly at that narrative reverse the terrible thing and then try to protect all the terrible people involved in the terrible thing. I mean, this is what's happening. It was terrible. Now, are they going to get a bump as a kind of a thank you for doing the right thing? Sure. And I'm glad that we won and we got the green belt lands back. I mean, let's all take a deep breath of success on that. It's a huge, huge thing for generations, which is why we are all so concerned. I'm not, I'm going to try not to swear more than one time in this show, Uh, but here's the thing. They got caught. It was huge. People were pissed. Now, what about Ontario Place? When people find out that this is a a cover for a casino, potentially, and that there was half a billion dollars of our money going to this this group that may or may not have had an executive over here and over here and something with deco labels. I mean, I think as another scandal builds, which Ontario Place sure feels like it is, People are going to look at that in a couple of months, Keith, and say, wait, what? Just when I thought that these guys learned their lesson, they're doing what now? You know, so it has to be a real scandal. There has to be real evidence of real wrongdoing to get people really pissed again. But this government, you're, like to Mark's point, they're going to make it two and a half years before we find out something else that drives Ontario banana cakes. And oh, I don't think a so. Pole, a poll is a snapshot in time. Right. They got their bounce on on the mea culpa and the cry teary thing. Can they keep their nose out of, you know what, until the election? No, they'll throw money at everybody. They'll try to get all their coffers nice and packed and full so they can out politic the other parties. Depends who's the leader of the Liberal Party. And I hope to get all the Liberal candidates on soon for leadership. But the point is, I think the people of Ontario might give them a bit of a reprieve right now. Like, OK, you, you, you know, you're getting a mulligan here. But is it going to last, Keith? Oh, well, look, the easiest comparison, the most obvious one for the 95-year lease for this Austrian spot, Ontario Place, would be the 99-year lease given to the, I think it's now a Spanish consortium that owns Highway 407 that the previous PC government, and I believe the billions of dollars of undervalue, like that taxpayers gave, it's the most expensive whole highway in North America, if not the world. The revenues there, oh, we didn't even find them the billion dollars when they didn't meet revenue streams during the uh, pandemic. Oh, well, no, that's a pardon. On. This thing is worth gazillions of dollars and was basically given away by a previous government to balance its books just before an election, as I recall. Right. Uh, this 95-year lease, it, again, we know nothing about it. Nothing. 
We don't know who's financing it, where they're going. And and the rumors that this is a front for a spa, or excuse me, the spa is a front for a casino, have been around for quite some time. And I know most of your high-end casinos will have a spa in them. So, you know, I mean, it may not be, but I don't know of any spa and very few casinos because, you know, in Vegas, this isn't an issue of cutting down 850 trees, but we're going to put some back on the roof. I mean, you don't have to be much of an environmentalist to look at those lands at Ontario Place. Yes, they need sprucing up, but turning it into a broader park, which would cost a few millions of dollars as opposed to, well, building this parking garage. Isn't there plenty of parking across the street, across Lakeshore Boulevard? Not if you're building uh, the exhibition in in five years or whatever their plans are. But let me just say a couple points on this because I went through the no casino debate in Hamilton, as did Mark, and it was robust. I mean, there are a few things that really get people to go out and fight. One of them is the craven exploitation of the vulnerable, right? Obviously, the exploitation of the environment got everybody upset. But trust me, you open up the casino debate, you get people realizing that this is an end run around a casino. Go to places where there are casinos and it is like a sinkhole in the downtown in terms of what it does. And what it does to the population makes me insane. So I think if it comes out with Ontario Place that this is an end run for a casino and this is one big ass dirty deal, uh, you might get that kind of passion back that we saw with the green belt where people are like, no, we said no. We said no over and over and over again. We freaking don't want this thing. It's not a good use for our waterfront. So let me ask you if I can, Keith, Monty McNaughton, you right. said it was a huge deal when he lost Monty. Where did Monty go? He went from scandal to gamble. He's the wheeler, dealer, winer, diner for the freaking gambling. But Woodbine, <laughs> yeah, but for Woodbine, I'm yeah, pretty but... sure Woodbine does not want a casino on the waterfront. Oh, Woodbine okay. wants it has slot. It wants to keep everything out where Woodbine is now. Okay. Uh, would be my now. On the other hand, they could mm-hmm. probably sell those lands for a few dollars and move to the waterfront and attract more people. Absolutely. Uh, no, no, but, but I'm being cynical here. I, 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 I honestly think Monte McNaughton uh, was raised around har- horse racing in that part of Ontario. It, it, it okay. is in his blood. I think this is one of those good jobs for him. Okay. I question now because I, I sort of believed him one as well. He said that his cabinet ministry was tired of driving up and down the 401 every week, and I absolutely got that. <laughs> Can't see how that's going to change if he's at uh, Woodbine. But in any event, uh, it just looks like, yeah, he's not a lobbyist. He's the industry now. And so whether they are against a casino on the waterfront or whether they would, it would buy and would instantly go, we can work with that, uh, which would be my suspicion. Uh, so it puts uh, him and Woodbine in a very interesting spot. And again, just adds that little bit more fuel to the fire totally. of this whole spa thing, which is a bizarre idea to begin with, being a front for a casino, which makes infinitely more sense in most of our minds. Now, most of us don't put together business cases. For, oh, wait, we haven't seen that yet, have we? No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Keith for the sarcasm win. <laughs> so I can see you, uh, Mark, like freaking out down <laughs> on the call. Uh, what's your theory to the Monty goes gambling? My, I, I had exactly the same reaction as you did. Very immediately connected dots. As somebody who, so when I was in government, I also worked at uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs when we went through the whole horse racing right. transition. Very um, ugly. Um, and, you know, let me just say that that the, 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 the two main figures behind that uh, convincing the government to kick out horse racing were two prominent conservatives, uh, one being Paul Godfrey and the other one being um, uh, the former uh, minister from Ajax, Rod uh, Phillips. Right. They pitched the idea of cutting out horse racing and using those facilities to increase cons- uh, casino revenues. Um, so I I know these players and I know what they want. Um, and they want a big, they've always wanted a massive casino. They want to turn Toronto into a destination. They believe that this is a, you know, a destination play. Come to Toronto for the spa and the casino. And hey, we've got some uh, stand, or we've got some thoroughbred horse racing right down the road too. And it's all owned by the same people. Who and they're all their hands are in this pot. Connect the dots. I think you are bang on. You are right. I think Monty being there is is part of a broader plan for wood for the Woodbine Group, which they don't care about 
moving. Uh, you know, they can keep the horse racing on the stand. The the thoroughbred horse racing stands on it on its own. It's the yeah. one. It's style the only of one. Horse, it's the only style of horse racing that actually people really enjoy, or majority of people enjoy. Um, so I could see this. You know, and so you have a you have a small casino there, and you have a massive casino right down the street, and you're a Woodbine Entertainment Group, and you are raking in the dough. So I think there's something to this. Well, level. you know what, Mark? Also, I think uh, in Hamilton, for our Hamilton audience, you know, big entertainment group downtown with the big secret deal always wanted a casino on that location, right? And the city said no. So is that an end run here in Hamilton? So there's a reason why we, uh, you know, this whole Ontario Place deal smells like a horse barn because there's tons of money to be made if there's a casino on the waterfront in toronto but again it ain't going to be for the people in ontario who need money who need help who are struggling with affordability who are struggling to get in a freaking hospital room because they're underfunding our public health care it's not for the people of Ontario who can't sue the long-term care home that is mistreating their family members because Doug Ford didn't let that happen. And we know conservatives own a lot of the long-term care. I mean, le gentlemen, let me end on this point. Sure, they might've gotten a bump in the polls, the conservative government, but we have spent a half an hour and we could spend hours daily talking about the level of suspicion and scams and corruption and underfunding and moves this government might be making. In other words, they are, to Mark's point, they've lost confidence, they are scandal plagued, and the trust is gone. Ford won't even do a scrum anymore, Keith. You know, oh, no. what happened to those daily scrums at the beginning of the scandal when they thought he could folksy handle all this crap? He can't. He hasn't had one since the day he did the climb down in Niagara Falls. Yeah, yeah. four weeks. Uh, yeah, I think September 17th. I think that was so, you know, it's been a while. Uh, he doesn't hiding. want to take questions. Right. Uh, and gee, I wonder why. Uh, there's so many things. I mean, so many files you could pluck out, as you said, that we could talk about. Uh, and and I think, you know, on the horizon, let's teacher strikes, maybe you know, teachers for a strike. Book. So there's so much. But I think this government, Laura, is just going to continually plow ahead, stick yeah. to its own agenda, especially I, I'm not so confident of, of PC backbenchers standing up to this guy if he gets back up to and stays at this 40 percent in the polls. I agree. Hopefully it's a bump and this other stuff. It just keeps the daily hammering away the drip, 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 drip of this. It hurts. And the cumulative effect is people do start paying. I thought the Greenbelt scandal was over. Wait a minute. What? What? That Vegas trip? There's still more coming on that? The Auditor General? Like, there's still a heck of a lot more to come. A lot of really interesting tidbits, you know, and some salacious stuff that does get people interested. So yeah. the whole idea... I don't want to hear about of... anything more coming from that Vegas trip. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, there's an investigation. So well, we will hear on. more about that. Uh, but the whole point being, oh. there's so much more to come. And most of it is not going to be look made the gov make the government look very good at all. All I know is this, guys, is that they're not superhero humans, and Ford is not a god. And they have given so much reason to doubt their government because of the exposure of the Greenbelt panel. And whatever you think of Merritt Stiles' handling of the Sarah Jama affair, she is certainly on fire when it comes to holding this government to account through investigations and freedom of information and AG and IC reports. In other words, we have a fierce opposition that is actually going after this government. We have a government whose premier, Mr. Folksy, can't even face a scrum anymore because they know that anything he'd be asked would be terrible because they are in a terrible situation on multiple files. And as I started the program, guys, the Mounties are coming. <laughs> the Mounties are on this. They're under criminal investigation. And when Paul Calandra said that he hadn't had the Mounties call his office, well, not yet. <laughs> you know? so, so thank you both, as always, for trying to keep Keep our audience uh, up to date on all of the scandals and shady deals. And you know what? We are doing our best to watch it, but I'm really glad to see the three opposition parties working together uh, so that we get the facts that we need, like that AG report, so that we're able to hold them to account. Before People in Ontario deserve better than this shit. They really do. Thanks so much, guys. And thank you for watching The O Show. Uh, and please subscribe. We'll keep the good stuff coming. And this panel will be back as often as we need to. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like we need to a lot. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you. When you care about current affairs, it's on the old show. And when you want to get clear what's going on here, it's on the old show. If you like to stay in the know, tune yourself into the 
Oh show, it's the old show. Laura Babcock's the old show. With a lot of great guests, she puts them to the test on the old show. There's no doubt they'll be calling them out on the old show. Stand for something, or fall for it all. Ontario, hear the call on the old show. It's a podcast, the old show. Laura Babcock's the old show. Stay informed with the old show, old show.